Right, what we're going to look at today is a comparison between dry performance around the greens and wet performance. Okay, so there's a little bit of dew on the ground this morning, so I'm going to actually tee the ball up a little bit just to make sure no moisture gets trapped in there because I want a real uh, good representation of a dry ball, dry surface, dry green. Uh, to have a look at the launch and the spin, and then we're going to do a comparison to what happens when it gets wet. Let's take a look. Right, quite a simple protocol. Uh, we're gonna hit five shots with three different clubs. We're gonna go 58, 52, and a nine iron. Like I mentioned, they're gonna be teed up. It's drying out, but it's not quite perfectly dry, and I, I want that, so we'll go with the first set of five. It's a 30-yard shot. we have got a camera up behind the hole as well, so you can see where the ball pitches and how it reacts. Let's take a look. I hit that one so well, a bit higher on the face. That's better. That's better, 56. Okay, so 500 RPM difference. No real big difference in flight or landing control. Pretty good. That wasn't hit so well, that's going to release out of touch. Three and a half. So quite the drop. Just have to keep checking that green behind me, make sure I'm not ambushed by the natives. Let's have one more ball in that set. So these are all Callaway Chrome Soft X, all brand new. That wasn't it so good either. A little bit bottom edge, that's going to be a... Wow. That felt like it wasn't very spinny at all. It's 59. It's actually the highest out of the group. So interesting start, a range from 36 with a poorly struck shot. And then if we discard that, 51 to 59. 1,000 RPM difference almost on the well struck shot. So that's a, that's a good start. Okay, 58 done. Going to drop to 52. We'd expect a slightly flatter launch six degrees less loft, and a drop in spin rate. The question is how much of a drop and how consistent are those spin rates? So set number two, five balls, same shot. Definitely flatter, rolling out a lot more. Sit it a bit harder, that's gonna to have to spin. Didn't. Duff T. Okay, ball number three. Teeing skills zero. Okay, ball three. Let's see if we can get back on track there. That was a better strike. Definitely a little bit more grab on that. Okay, so a couple of balls in the fours. That one has actually genuinely deserved. It wasn't smashed, it's not 15 feet by. Ball number four. Slight pull. Slight pull. Interested to see this one. Four one. Okay. So that's like one poorly struck shot so far, just kind of poorly struck but smashed, and a slight pull. Okay, ball number five. Just doesn't feel spinny to me at all. And I think it was, I'd be surprised if that one broke four. It did 42. So consistent, just the land angle maybe, we need to take a look at that, maybe the land angle's not sufficient to actually get it to grab when I'm using 52. Okay, so that's set two done. Third club is gonna be a nine iron, gonna see a drastically different launch, different roll. Um, interested to see the consistency of spin again though. Okay, set three, nine iron. Um, definitely not the club of choice for me if I was playing this 30 yarder. So straightforward, I'm 58 all the time, try and fly it. 
Um, the 52, I was a bit unsure. This is being a bit long wasn't a surprise. 99, I know it's going to roll out, so I'm certainly going to be able to visualize that quite easily, pitching it front edge, running it up. The question is, how much spin does it generate? Um, how much does it grab as a comparison? So still teed up, still a little bit damp. Let's give it a go, see what happens. Try and land this just on. See if I can get it rolling up. That was more than just on. That was absolutely destroyed. That was certainly a better shot. First bounce, it actually threw a little bit of turf up, but it still went. Okay, you can see it try and grab. Still released out 15, 18 steps. See if we can land it in a similar area. That'd be good. A little bit left. Grabbed a little bit quicker, still released out a decent amount. That's a little bit thin. And it's ended up closest out of the four shots. It's just a golf all over, isn't it? it launches 21, you know, it's a little flat runner for sure. I've hit that really hard again, like the first ball. Absolutely flushed it and that felt Felt like I was trying to hit it from 150. That just came off like an absolute rocket. 3-1 again though, so you can't really, you can't really look at this and say that the spin is not more consistent. It is. Um, the dispersion is quite big though. For me, there's a long right, there's a couple of short lefts. A long right, smashed twice, short lefts, don't want to smash it. Then there's one that I actually miss hit slightly and it's a tap in. There's stuff to be learned now. Obviously the point of this video is to try and compare dry to wet. Now, if only there was a way I could make it wet. Here we go, like magic. Uh, very, very wet underfoot, probably hear it. 30 yards or so, quad still here. I'm gonna go 58, 52, nine, seven. Five balls each, just see what the effect is on launch, spin, and observed run out. Let's get the experiment underway. Wow, well, that plays different. Okay, still has stopping power. It's going to be really interesting to see the spin results on these. Launch didn't seem crazy high. Just having to hit it a little bit harder. That was struck pretty good. A little cleaner. Spin rate should be pretty high on that one though. We've seen that one really pull up. slipped a little bit. You see it just roll forwards up the hill, which was kind of useful. Okay, so that's set one done. 58 uh, repetition from the dry. We're now soaking wet. Couldn't make it any wetter if I wanted to. Uh, I'll, I'll walk up, have a little look and see what the runouts were like and see a couple little pitch marks. Uh, but the data is going to be really interesting, so let's move on to the next set. Okay, set two, 52 degree. Obviously he's gonna spin less when it's dry, but we're gonna see just what difference or change there is now it's soaking wet. So let's get on with this set. So I'm gonna to have to make a bit of a speed adjustment. Ball should come off a little quicker than the 58. Let's just see how it behaves. Yeah, definitely flatter. Now I'd say that's more touch than anything else. Small adjustment on touch required, I think. And that wasn't it too good, you'd hear it. It's definitely so, it's so much hotter than I'm used to with very little spin. So I've, I've fired the first three balls way past, come 10, 12 feet a ball, maybe more on one of them. So the adjustment's not that easy. It's coming out lower faster, but it's also still really low spin, so it's skidding as well. So I really need to try and recalibrate my landing area. 
Oh, I think I smashed it again. Just something I don't practice. That's landed way shorter and it's stopped way shorter. Okay, set to 52 degree. Um, four out of five just long and it's down to me. Again, what we're really looking at though, what we're really keen to look at is the change in spin rate and launch as to whether there is consistency to be gained from going down loft. So just remember that, bear in mind, it's not about the outcome so much because um, that's my fault and we're all human, right? So let's go on to set three. Okay, set three, nine iron. Um, then th my theory was that as we go down the loft, the consistency would be tighter, you know, less chance of the ball slipping up the face. Hasn't shown itself in the outcome so far which isn't very convincing. Uh, nine iron's gonna have to land really front half of the green. I'm expecting a lot of rolls. You know, the reality may be that this ends up better. I'm gonna set myself up for a four now. This might end up better than a 52, just because I like associate a nine iron with something that's gonna roll out much more. Whereas 52 is kind of a middle ground. I almost lost myself there. So let's see what we get. All right, so ball's in the zone. GC quad is set. Let's have a little run with the nine iron at it and see what we get. Okay, that was actually really good. It was probably a groove low if I was being picky. Just caught a slightly different part of the green, but that's really working its way up nicely. I think as I went down to this loft, it just, like I said, it really started to match the outcome uh, with the expectation or the expectation with the outcome as in I'm seeing the shot much better than the 50 to 50 I didn't really know where I was trying to hit it oh that's smashed that's <laughs> funnily enough it had a little bit of grab it's only maybe six feet you're not quite going to see that on the end camera I don't think it's quite wide enough but I actually pulled up up the hill I was expecting that to be way by like the 52s but it's not it's actually it's actually pretty good. That's in a puddle. Oh, just over it. When they're, they're all low spin, it's not like you're trying to spin it when it's wet. It's about getting consistency of spin. I fatted it. Now that'll be an interesting one because that was missed and it's worked its way up the hill. That spin's got to be low. That's a miss hit in the wet and it's still got decent spin. Um, 58s, I didn't really look at the spin rate, so I'm gonna have to kind of rewind myself a little bit there and check out what it is. I don't think it's gonna be that much higher. 7-iron, I can't fit it on the green, I've picked the wrong shot, so we'll stick with 58, 52, 9-iron in today's test. But I'll go and grab the GoPro in a second and just show you the grouping around the hole. It's pretty good, it's pretty tight. You know, I wouldn't be too disappointed in any of those shots except the one that just kind of grabbed a bit more and move to the right, more start line issue than anything else, just caught a different part of the green. So it didn't work out quite so well. And really fascinating that the consistency there was okay with the 58, because that's the club I always uh, default to anyway. The 52, I didn't really have a clue. The spin came right down. The launch was in between. I didn't really know where to hit it. The nine iron, I could get a very clear picture, getting it on the green pretty early, kind of a small swing. Spin rates actually stayed up. Now that's an interesting point. So we can take a little look at the 9-iron group. And um, it's pretty tight, apart from this single ball here, which is maybe 10 feet. The rest of them are very good. So we're in, we're dry. Very quick recap, um, just to try and wrap our heads around some of the data that I've taken today. And we'll start with the obvious, the spin rate. No real surprises on spin rate. There was obviously a drop off, quite dramatic with the, the 58, decent amount with the 52, much, much less of a drop off with the 99. Okay, so no real surprises there. Maybe a surprise to some would be that the 99 actually started to spin more in the wet than the 52 and the 58. So if we go to the wet column, you'll see the 9s at 2646, 52 at 22, 58 at 24. So the 99 is actually spinning more than the more lotte clubs once the, the friction disappears um, or reduces dramatically. It doesn't really always completely disappear. That being said, is it practical to try and utilize the spin? Probably not. You know, 9-9 comes in very, very flat. 
comes off the club very, very quick. So yeah, it spins more. Does it have any real practical application? No, you, they're, they're all barely spinning anyway. The, the balls are all rolling out. Uh, 52 started to look like the 58. When it, dry versus wet. What I mean by that is the launch on the 52 started to look like a dry 58. The land angle on the 52 started to land like a dry 58. Now that's what kind of scrambled my brain a little bit. I was seeing this ball behave in a way that I'm used to seeing when it's dry. Yeah, when it hit the green, there was no landing control. Hence, most of my 52s were just smashed way, way past the target. So not much use for me um, because it made too much of a mess of uh, me mentally. Um, nine iron, however, started to really fit what I expected to see. Now the nine iron changed the least uh, between dry and wet. It was so tight. You know, spin rate stayed within 500 RPM or so launch angle barely moved, land angle barely moved, and consistency was very good. So long story short, a 9-iron is going to behave in the wet very, very much like it behaves in the dry. So no real adjustment needed to be made by the player, which is it's very useful to know. Now, it's not useful if you're not the kind of player that practices much with an iron iron like myself. Now, of use to me is knowing that there is going to be more variance in the more lofted clubs but when it came down to it and push came to shove, my carries were very, very tight uh, from dry to wet, you know, with, with the 58, you know, which was of use to me. You know, I carried it 27 in the dry, I carried it 7, 27 in the wet. Spin rate dropped off enormously, but land angle steepened. And because that land angle steepened, the run out wasn't really exaggerated by the lack of spin. So the ball behaved in a very similar way, although there is, of course, more variance. You know, you'll see that in the standard deviations um, up here on the left. Now, there's a reduction when it's wet, of course, but there's still more variance in the more lofted clubs there is on the less lofted clubs. It just happens that that variance will often play to your advantage. You, know, you may have a big drop-off in spin on one shot, but the ball slips and it launches higher and lands steeper. So the end outcome can often be very, very similar. So, in a nutshell, if you practice with lower lofted clubs, you're going to see very, very little difference in behavior of the ball on the green, so you can just carry on as you were. If you play with more lofted clubs around the green, you're going to tend to see more slip, more variance, but more often than not, but not always, the outcomes will be very, very similar, even though you might see the ball launch changing, the spin changing. Um, it's almost cancelled out by the changes in carry, land angle, and run out. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. It's a nice little experiment. Not much fun for me in the pouring rain. But if you do like the content, please subscribe, turn notifications on, and I'll be back with more next week.